Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bonafide Bus. Today we are going to break down how much it costs for us to convert our school bus into our tiny home. Eric and I made a nice long Excel spreadsheet that I'll be going through on my computer and it details everything from the cost of the vehicle to our solar um, into different categories so we are going to be going through that. It will be linked in the description below so if you're curious you can go through and see exactly how much we paid for everything. In addition to that we also made an Amazon storefront so if you wanted our fridge for example or our toilet you can go through our Amazon storefront get the exact items and we get a little commission through that so if you use that thank you you chose the toilet as the example <laughs> if you want our toilet <laughs> Before we get started with everything, the reason that we wanted to break down our build cost for you is because it's one of the most asked questions that we get. Um, when it comes to the range of conversions out there, we probably came in the middle cost-wise. You could do this build a lot cheaper or you could do it more costly just depending on what you want. But hopefully you'll be able to use the spreadsheet as a tool to just better plan and organize. A lot of the prices of goods have fluctuated since we did our build. At the end of this video, we will also go back through and tell you where we think we could have saved money. So let's get started. First off is the vehicle itself. We paid $80 initially to have somebody come and inspect the bus before we purchased it. And all in all, the bus itself was $6,900. So that comes to almost $7,000 for the bus in total. Uh, if you've been in the market or looking for schoolies lately, you know that the prices for them over the past few years has gone way up. Everybody's trying to convert. Um, for what we paid for our bus, I think we got actually a pretty good deal on it. It's a diesel, it had about 100,000 miles on it, and we have an extra door, which everybody wants in their bus. Um, if you were willing to go for a longer bus, those are actually less expensive, um, and the shorter ones tend to be more expensive. On to our solar and electrical system. We wanted to run everything off of solar. We didn't want to have to do a plug-in or a generator. If you go on the spreadsheet, you'll be able to see all of our items that we have in our solar kit. They're also listed in our Amazon storefront. The prices of solar and doing your own solar kits now have decreased since we did our build in 2020. The technology is getting better, there's also a lot more competition in the market, so you can see these prices going down, which is great for us. For example, in 2020 we bought two Renogy 200 amp hour batteries, and each battery was about $850. Today you can get two of them for that price. Overall, very happy that we invested all of the money that we did in our solar system. Um, if we were to go back, we would still spend the higher amount that we did in 2020 for the setup that we have. On to appliances, our bigger ticket items, things like our refrigerator, our wood stove, our sink and faucet, things like that. Before we even had our bus, we were planning out some of these appliances that we knew we wanted, you know, those creature comfort things that just make your build feel homey to you. It can be really difficult to predict how much wood is gonna cost, things like wood and paint, but these appliances were things that we could plan out and prepare for before we even started our build. Our refrigerator, for example, we went with an Iceco 74 liter. Um, that's kind of in the middle of the pack price-wise. You could easily spend a few hundred dollars more if you were to get a Dometic or something like that. You could also spend a lot less if you went with an off-brand name refrigerator. Additionally, the most expensive item in our bus is our Nature's Head composting toilet. It's a thousand dollar toilet. As you might know if you're researching to build. Um, we also have our cubic mini wood stove. That was another really big ticket item. Were they worth the money? Um, we will come back at the end of the video and answer that question, but let's keep moving on. 
Next up we have build materials. This is a huge scary section that we had to break up into subcategories like kitchen, shower, etc. These are all the little things that you don't necessarily think about when you start your build. Things like hinges that you'll need, screws, etc. All of the things that make you go to the store once a day, maybe twice, sometimes three times. If you watched our build series, you'll remember this list, number of times we actually had to go to the store during our build. All of those fall into this category. We were not professionals when we started our build. We also, if you watch the build series, know that we were pretty rushed and we had a limited amount of time. So when you go through this list, just know you could probably cut down a lot of these costs. We were just buying things, buying them in advance so that we'd have them when we needed them. Um, you could probably replace a lot of these materials with reclaimed items if you have the time to do so um, and the resources. We were not able to upcycle as many materials as we would have liked and we did probably buy an excess of things. Actually, we definitely did buy an excess of things. At the end of our build, we actually took all of the materials that we didn't use and returned them at our local hardware store and ended up getting $400 back. Next up we have maintenance, so everything that we've put into the bus to keep it running and on the road. We purchased the bus in 2020, two years ago, and this is everything that we've accumulatively put into the bus since then. So new tires, you might know that we had to do some engine work, we got new leaf springs recently. We actually hadn't added this total up since making this spreadsheet and seeing the total is shocking to me. I had no idea we spent this much on the bus since then. $14,000 have gone into maintaining our bus. Um, I definitely think it's worth it, but you should know if you want to convert a school bus, this is definitely something that you should plan for in your budget. Lastly, we have our other category. If we really got into the nitty gritty of everything, we probably could have made this 10 times longer, but we just wanted to do our big ticket items, which include our annual cost for insurance, $1,200. And then, as you may know, we just got Wi-Fi for the bus. That was over $1,300. And we have an additional monthly fee that we pay to AT&T for that. So let's get into the grand totals. The total for purchasing our bus and converting it was about $18,000. With the maintenance added into that, it was about $36,000. We were surprised by all of the maintenance costs and everything, but that's exactly why we wanted to break this down for you guys so that you can be better prepared and plan ahead. Just want to point out that we didn't have to do all of this maintenance and repairs. Some of the things we did need to do, like get new tires, etc. But a lot of them we chose to do because the timing was convenient and we just felt like it would be safer and, you know, better driving the bus, etc. Things like that. The huge unknown that we have in the spreadsheet that we still don't even know what to price is our labor. Eric and I dropped everything for over three months to work night and day on this build. I don't know how to price that. Uh, we spent so much time, stress, energy, and resources doing this build. Everybody also values their time differently, so who knows what to price that at. Um, additionally, we did everything in this bus ourselves except for when our friends or family were helping us with something and they were doing it for free out of the goodness in their hearts. For some of you it might make more sense to pay somebody to professionally install your solar system or maybe your plumbing for example. For us it was kind of like a badge of honor and a source of pride that we did everything ourselves and we know where every single screw in this bus is. Okay, let's go back and see where we think that you could save money if you were to do this exact same build. 
Our sink and faucet we ordered from Amazon. If you were able to find one and upcycle it, you could probably get a really good deal on it. We also had to purchase two of our faucets because the first time we stripped some of the hardware in it and we had to order another one. It's one of those things that just happen when you're building your bus on your own. Next up, our diesel heater. We had to buy two of those because we cheaped out and we got the Chinese diesel heater instead of the really well-made manufactured ones. Let's go right into our big appliances, things that we could have easily saved hundreds of dollars on off the bat, starting off with the Cubic Mini wood stove. This is a love-hate relationship and depending on the season, we think it's either worth the investment or not. You probably could upcycle a wood stove off of Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that and work it into your build. You could probably get one for like 50 bucks as opposed to 700. There are also much cheaper options to heating your bus, for example, the diesel heater or propane. We just went with the wood stove because we thought it was pretty and good ambiance. Next up we have the Nature's Head composting toilet, the thousand dollar toilet. I think it was worth the investment. Eric doesn't think it was worth the investment. If we were to try and find a composting toilet now as opposed to a year ago when we did our build, there are probably much cheaper and different options. You could also get a black tank. You could also go as cheap as getting a bucket with a toilet seat over the top. That's really a personal preference. Do you have to spend a thousand dollars? Definitely not and we could have saved a lot of money there. Lastly for big appliances we have our ice core refrigerator. Ours is definitely middle of the pack. You could go way more expensive and get a huge Dometic or you could go much cheaper and get a cooler and refill ice. Again, middle of the pack is what we chose. Overall, we've been very happy with it. When it comes to build materials, this is where you have a ton of opportunity to upcycle things. The main things that we upcycled in our build are our closet and then our lower cabinets. If you have the time to find things to upcycle, the space to store them, and the creativity, you could potentially, in this category, save maybe thousands of dollars. When it comes to upcycling, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, those are all great resources to find creative and really cool ways to upcycle things in your build. Again, this entire spreadsheet and all of the breakdowns will be listed in the description below. When Eric and I first started dreaming up our entire bus adventure, we loved planning the layout and everything, but we also loved planning our finances. So I wish that at the time we had had something like this from somebody who had actually done their own build and lived in it for a while. So please use this as a resource and use this as a tool for yourself. All that matters are that you are comfortable and you are safe in your build. As long as those two things are covered, you will be satisfied with whatever you create. The last piece of advice that I'm going to offer is to save a couple extra thousand dollars in some kind of rainy day fund for, you know, those inevitable expenses that will happen down the road. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really hope that this can help you plan and prioritize. Have a great day and we will see you next time.